Second one, right. Now let's get serious. Let's go into the business side of how we're going to win better projects. Well, I said we've got to operate with a little bit more intention and it starts with selecting who you're going to work with. Okay, so if you don't select your projects and clients, then they're going to select you, right? And you don't want that, right? You, you know, you're lucky. I have really bad clients. Really? Who let them in? On well, me. Now, if you've got crappy projects or, or not as many as you want, whose fault is it? Well, you know, it's yours. Right now, your projects determine your income, your projects, your career satisfaction, all that type of stuff. If you don't, all sorts of bad things can happen. Now, I, you know, if you don't choose who you work with and to some degree become a bit of a specialist, you end up a bit of a generalist. And the problem with being a generalist is you're not seen as special. All right, so most marketers will teach you, this is nothing new, most marketers will teach you specialize because it makes marketing so much easier. You can't think be all things to all people. The other problem with it is that if we look at all the projects that you could be doing at any particular point in time, probably only 20% of them, the 80-20, 20% of them are great. 80% are are not great, but you know, maybe some of them are okay. Maybe 50% of them are okay. Uh, but ideally, you just want to be working on the top 20%. So you've got to define what they are, right? And, and you might say, oh, well, if I just you know, keep it that narrow, um, I might run out of work. Well, no, not if you do the stuff I show you, right? Um, you've got to know who you want, but you've also got to know who you don't want. Right, so I did this exercise with some of our guys the other day. Who's who's on your no list? And they came up with a number of things. Right, you know, who are the clients where as soon as you know you see any of this stuff, they are no, they're out. Okay, you can't know who you're for if you don't know who you're not for. Okay, feel free to take sort of a, a shot of any of this. Okay, so let's have a look at, okay, if I'm going to specialize, how does that work? Well, the, there's a number of different strategies we can use to make you special. One of the easiest, most basic ways at the bottom of the sort of the power pyramid is just to call you and position you as a specialist. There are a lot of different niches you can choose, and these aren't all of them. But the very most basic way of doing this is pick one and position yourself as a specialist in that niche. Okay, now, if you have something wrong with your heart or your brain, you're going to want to go see a brain or a heart specialist, right? You're going to expect to pay more. It's more, you know, it's more important to you, right? So specialists get paid more. Uh, exactly right. So when you're assessing the projects that I want to win. I'll give you a little example here. This one's from Julia Minor. She's in one of our mastermind groups. And the project type she wants, she's gone beyond just being a specialist. She's really created her, her own category. And she calls it art for living, right? So this is a, a more advanced strategy than just picking a, a specialist. You create your own category. And she's developed a backstory. And she's a bit of an artist herself and uh, architect, and she's combined the two. And she's got qualification. What, what has to happen? You know, what's my qualification for someone who I will do my art for living experience with? This is a particular type of design, a bit like uh, Bruce Lee, who got a bit fed up with Kung Fu, and he created his own martial art called Jeet Kune Do. Now, as soon as he comes up with Jeet Kune Do, if he can tell a good story about it and you know, persuade people as to why Jeet Kune Do is better than Kung Fu and anything else, then if they go, yeah, that sounds good. I want to learn Jeet Kune Do. He suddenly becomes number one in a category of one on day one. Right? It happens all the time. What's passive house? Passive house didn't used to exist. Someone created a new category, 
they created you know rules for it here's the rules for, for what has to happen and you know there's a whole lot of different things so this is julia's one these are how she you know does this category what she does there um there's certain rules they've got to appreciate great design they've got to follow her process which starts with a storyboard which is an lcc uh can't be ugly can't be cooker cutter and is not for all people all right so that's some thinking around selecting a project as an example but a project selecting a project is not enough uh if you want to find great projects find great people now that's not always true but it's not a bad mantra to think about right behind great people and great projects peter tui uh has selected the type of people he's been very specific about the type of people he wants to work with and here's his avatar right and i won't go through all of them but you know you can see he's pretty specific about who he wants what they look like, what they do, what they drive, how they come to him. You know, he likes them being referred ideally. He's got rapport with them. One of the big ones is they are devoted to the design of their home, devoted, right? So he'll ask specific questions, digging into their dream. If they're not devoted and completely in love with the idea of what they're trying to do, he didn't want them, right? And it's gotta be a project worthy project <coughs> and a number of other things, but you can see the detail he's going into. Okay, very important. It, it helps because when you're designing your bait, your uh, marketing materials, which you, you're looking to attract people to you, to start out with, we use, we use a lot of stuff called educational marketing, which I'll talk about in a second. But educational marketing is around solving problems for your target market and, and, and promoting the fact that you have these solutions available that they can get. Okay. Um, so initially he started out with how to hire an architect. Now that was kind of a well, white belt move. And he ended up with a lot of rats and mice because there's a lot of people who want to hire an architect, but a lot of them don't fit into Peter's avatar, right? So it wasn't till we changed the name of the report to how to hire the right architect for your million dollar dream home. Now all the rats and mice didn't apply to that because they thought, well, that's not me. I've got a $200,000 budget and I'm trying to put an extra bedroom on the back. Clearly not me. So <laughs> the leads he gets with this one are all quality. Now that's more of a black belt move about being more specific. Okay. I said before there's different levels of, um, there's a power pyramid in terms of where are you? And at the bottom, and power pyramid, I guess there's more power as you go up, right? So at the bottom, we have the generalists. Even though I know a lot of architects say, yeah, I'm a generalist, and you you talk about that as if it's an attribute and, and it's a benefit. And it, and it, it is because you can do lots of different things. I get that. But from a marketing point of view, to the clients, it doesn't come across as a benefit. It comes across as jack of all trades, you know, master of none. That's a problem. So it doesn't matter what the reality is, the problem is generalists earn less. Uh, they are more treated like a commodity. They'll be price shopped more. As you go up, you can become a specialist. You know, I'm a specialist in container, container retail shops or something. Move up, expert, authority, at the highest is celebrity. In, in the Western culture, celebrities, they shouldn't. But if, if you said to me, I can have, let's see, uh, Oprah Winfrey promote your business, you know, Architect Marketing Institute, I'd rather have that than the head uh, design professor at Harvard, right? Give me Oprah any day because she's, she's got more power in this world. That's how it works, right? So, so that's the list. And, and, you know, you can at least get yourself up to specialist. Right, at least get yourself up to specialist. Okay, you want to position yourself as number one. Here are some levels. If you're just a commodity uh, architect, so you're kind of a generalist, you'll probably end up doing this type of stuff. You'll be end up in these beauty competitions where people can just get quotes from you. 
right? You, you're setting yourself up in a very commodity, you know, based place. If you move up the pyramid to somewhere like expert status, you know, architecture's dead. No one wants to pay for great design, but Bob's making a fortune. Yeah, Bob's a well-known specialist in a profitable niche. Yes, exactly. Right? Bob's higher up the power pyramid. Here is another example of someone. Now, this is a friend of mine. He, he's CEO for Brookfields, uh, Brookfield, and they look to buy companies. Okay, so they buy companies and they look to buy, if you see down the bottom here, uh, exposure to scarce, high quality business with significant barriers to entry. Right, the higher up that power pyramid you go, the less, but the, you know, it's harder. It's harder because most people don't know how to go up the power pyramid. 